Hey everybody, this is Stanford. We're gonna push forward with the mark making on the old cabin. So this is the sketch that we came up with, or I came up with. Hopefully yours is done and it has all the basic elements to basically support the mark making. So again, I just have basic structures, outlines of things, and I'll add detail with the mark making with pen this time. So just to remind you of what we did, we started with mark making techniques we did those in pencil. I showed you guys how to do hatch, cross hatch, scribble, uh, fur or curved lines, and then stippling or dots. Uh, we did those in pencil because we didn't want to waste the ink of our pen, and it's just an exercise to show you uh, darks and lights like a value scale of shading. You add more marks to make it darker, less to keep it light. So it's just value scales with mark making Again, mark making is a high end of shading. And so I'll show you one that is complete. You've seen this image before. This is the one with the complete mark making in ink. So you have stippling up here, parallel lines in the background, scribble on the trees and the foliage, fur texture or grass texture, if you will, uh, cross hatch in the uh, windows and doors. There's a little bit of squiggly line action or parallel lines uh, in the uh, texture on the roof. A lot of parallel lines on the building itself. If you move over this way, there are parallel lines here on the wood stack in front. Uh, a lot of scribble and the trees are difficult, so I will definitely show you a demonstration on those trees and some other aspects of it. I won't do the whole entire thing. You'll figure it out after a little bit. A lot of parallel lines up here. And then if you examine the trees, it's just a lot of a uh, little bit of scribble, some extra lines to create the illusion of pine needles on them. Uh, this one here is all scribble on top of the framework. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna attack the simplest parts of it and I'll kind of go off of our handout here. So on the handout that I gave you guys, this is uh, basically not crosshatch, this is parallel lines or hatch. But I like to do crosshatch in the darkest area, so we'll detect that with crosshatch. So right in the window, the darkest part of the window, we can do crosshatch. Very simple. Just go nice and steady. This is gonna get pretty dark, so if you screw up, it'll be okay. Try not to outline anything with pen. You just want the edges of your mark making to create the outlines. That'll help it look more natural. I'll probably do at least one more layer over this to get it pretty dark. We do want these doors and windows to be the darkest things on here. And there's no gradation on this, you're just making it solid. Now in pen and ink, you don't really do anything like a solid black, you want the grain left even if it's the darkest area. Just give us, gives it that, uh, I don't know, pen and ink look, I guess. Okay, that's good for now. I can always go back and put another layer if I'm not happy with it. I'll attack this one over here. One more layer on that. Okay, that's good for now for that. Let's move back around to some different areas. Um, so back here is just parallel lines. I believe this is rain or it's a hillside. I don't know which. It's coming out of the clouds, so I'm assuming it's maybe rain. And that would be right in here in this layer. Uh, level. So I'm just going to do some parallel lines here. Notice again, I'm not outlining those. I just want the edge of my mark making to show differences in edges. So it's like an implied line on that edge versus an outline. Some things we will outline, but some things we can leave implied. And I don't want these as tight as the uh, 
darkest parts of the doors and windows. I want them to be a little bit lighter. We'll stay away from the edge of the house for now. So uh, some of this stuff's pretty basic. You'll figure it out just by doing it. You've got a little bit of scribble right here. See that scribble? So it's just foliage that's kind of on the edge of the house. So the scribble, to remember, is just a controlled contour line. You're not scribbling like you're a little kid. You are very controlled about how you are doing this. And so you're just trying to represent foliage, leaves, plants, whatever it might, might be, I don't know. And so you gotta be pretty random on your marks on the scribble. Uh, try not to repeat the same pattern. That's basically it for that section. I can come back later on and add more to it. Um, there's a little bit of grass and things in front of it. So if you want to, you can add you know, the grass blades. The same thing with grass. If you make it all the same exact distance and length, it's gonna be weird. So you have to really differentiate your grass blades. Different heights, space them out. Otherwise, it's gonna look a little bit strange. Gotta make it look natural. Um, this will all be grass here. You can see that there's some shading right here on the ground. It's parallel lines that are flat. A lot of shading on the grass. I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, let me show you how I do the roof. If you put a framework on your roof like that, like so, and then you can uh, just do a squiggly line, you know, on these individual spaces, it makes it look old. And do a little bit of squiggly line on that edge, because that is one outline that you do want to see. Um, and I just squiggly line this whole thing, just to make it look old. You can do them one at a time, so if you do a line in a row, it'll look a little weird, but if you do them one at a time, one tile at a time, it'll look pretty good. So squiggly line, all that. There are some parallel lines underneath here where the shading's coming down. So it's just parallel lines like this. All the way around that bottom lip of the house. You can see parallel lines on some other parts too. And then a lot of this part of the wood house, the cabin, it's just lines that are outlined. I think a lot of these are double lines too, so you might want to pop those guys in if you didn't. Notice how I haven't outlined here. I'm just going to put grass in front. It's sweeping right in front of it. You don't want any outlines on there. You just want the grass overlapping that. A little bit more shading back up in here. You can do uh, parallel lines or grass lines or a little bit darker right there. So more where you want it darker, less where you want it lighter. Be careful, don't overdo it too much. You can't take the darkness out of it, right? You can always add more, but you can't take it out. Um, if you just kind of stick to the basic structure here, squiggly line here, and parallel lines here, do what you see in here. Try to get as much detail as possible, and it's gonna look great. Now this is an old cabin, so if you're trying to make it look perfect, uh, don't fuss over it too much. If you screw up, just kind of add a little more to hide your screw ups. Uh, I know that there are a lot of parallel lines on here. And they're pretty, I think they're like wood little panels or pieces, slats coming across. And then the white stays white here. Make sure you do like a a line around those guys. But again, I'm not doing anything down here. I'm just going to let the grass and the foliage overlap it. So that's kind of how you handle this area. Oops, I probably left out a line there. That's all right. It's an old house. Uh, some of the wood pile is just a lot of horizontal lines. So when you want to shade that, you just add some horizontal lines like that. Um, vertical lines here for shading. And then there's grass that comes up over the top of it. So I probably didn't need to put that bottom outline on there, but it'll be all right. 
lots of grasses. Over here, there's a lot of grass in front, and then it goes into a scribble down here. And then these trees are what I want to tackle with you next, and we'll kind of camouflage with some scribble. So I've already got the framework of the tree. You just need to draw the trunk and the uh, branches coming off, just lines. And now we just want to take our scribble and thicken up that stuff. So I'll try to do this a little bit without talking too much because it's distracting when I'm talking. Just do a little bit of an erratic scribble on there. Just fill up the lines that you've got. Try to be a little thicker as you get towards the tree, a little thinner as you come out away from it. All right, so right now I've got a basic structure on there. It's a little thin in here, so we wanna kind of fill it up all around in here. So don't be afraid to get a little bit more aggressive with the amount of scribble all in here. And there's going to be a lot of stuff going on there, so a lot of it's going to be hidden. This is just like branches and foliage hanging off of it. You know it's there, you just can't really tell what it is because it's kind of in the distance a little bit. So all you're trying to do is fool the eye of the audience without drawing all the little tiny detail. So just thicken those pine trees up. Let the audience's brain kind of fill it in what it is. Now if you do want to be more precise you can do you know lines coming off here and there to look like pine needles little branches, things like that will kind of help with the illusion here and there. And then just keep filling in with more scribble. So sometimes pine needle branches hang down that way or they go up. And I don't know what type of pine this is, but you kind of should probably do one or the other. Otherwise it'll look a little weird if it's going everywhere. All right, so that's what this one kind of looks like. You just kind of keep working it. And then with all of the uh, grass and the scribble that's gonna be kind of on the ground up in here, it's gonna really hide a lot of everything else too. So I'm gonna put a little scribble in here and then I'm gonna come back and put grasses and things. And you just keep adding detail and detail and detail and illusion. Lots of heavy grasses up on this side. It's really shaded in here. And you'll add more scribble later on after you draw that uh, part of the house. And it gets a little thinner as it comes out away from that. Notice this is not exactly like that. I'm just kind of using that as an example. Um, just add a bit more. I mean, you want it more full. Maybe I want these a little longer here. Maybe I'll just add some lines and branches coming off as well. A little more detail. Just whatever you can do to fill that up using mark making techniques will probably fly. So there's a pretty good little tree. I would do the same thing on this one. This one over here is a little different. Uh, let me show you the ones that are a little more complete. So I've got a few in here and I just 
went a little bit more aggressive, added a lot of branches, a lot of details, lots and lots of uh, scribble and grass in there. I finished up the house. You can see it's just kind of going into the tree. The tree overlaps it. But let's take a look at this one. It's more specific and more precise. Vertical lines to show the uh, trunk, the uh, details on the trunk, the bark and stuff. And then scribble on these guys a little bit to thicken them up. And then there's precise lines with little uh, pine needles coming off. So not really much to it. But I would basically add a lot of vertical lines to this tree just to get it going. And then one side might be darker than the other depending on where your light source is or we'll have more lines on it. But you can just kind of fill it up like this until it's, it's parallel lines until you have the girth of it. A lot of this up here, you're not going to see the details, so you're just kind of getting in the silhouette of it. And then maybe over here, I'll add more just to keep it uh, maybe a lighter or darker side to it. So this side is going to be my dark side. And that's pretty much it for the trunk of the tree. Again, we'll have more grasses and things up here, kind of hiding everything. I'll add more scribbles. Do another tree back there. We'll fill in a lot of this ground in here. All that's going to be filled in. Let's take a look at these branches. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a scribble just to thicken them up. And then what you want to do is add some pine needles, a couple sets of lines coming off. They can be kind of however you want that way, maybe this way. You can add more little branches if you want. And that's basically it. So it looks really complex in here, but the process is very simple. All right. This is actually part of the mountain in the background, so I'm not going to draw on that one, but I want this branch to be kind of thick and present. So just kind of scribble it, put some lines on there to get it how you want it, and then add a few more branches with those pine needles coming off here and there. This tree is old and kind of dead, so you don't have to have it filled out too much just here and there. And yeah, maybe there's some just coming off right there. Let's go on this one. Again, just make them thicker at the base of the tree. As they go out, they get thinner. Something like that. I think the tree is kind of the hardest part because it's hard to make it look natural. But you have to just be random with it. And you continue on. Um, let me show you the clouds over here. So let's go back here. Now I really went crazy with the clouds on here. Now the idea for the clouds is you want a lot of dots on the bottoms of the clouds and just maybe a thin line on the tops because that's where the shading is going to be. So it does take a lot of dots. I added more clouds in that one than I probably needed to because I was kind of bored. So I just kind of do a layer of about three dots for that bottom section and then go back in and get it darker and lighter. Now, if you're doing dots with the pen, it's easier than with the pencil because you just have to put the pen to the paper and it creates a dot. So there's kind of the bottom edge. Later on, I'll come back and enhance it a little bit. I'm just going to do a dotted line for that top edge. And then later on, if I want to, I can come back and alter that as well. I can add more clouds, less clouds. But start with that, three lines on the bottom, one line on the top, and then come back and enhance it a little bit more. And you'll have a good set of clouds. Don't outline anything with your pen, except for this cabin here. And then 
erase all your pencil lines when you're done. When you're done, you'll have something like this. And then after this, you'll be kind of an expert in pen and ink. It'll really bring your uh, artistic skill to a high level. All right, I'm gonna sign out for now, and I'll check with you guys in class. Have a great day.